Yeah, all three are wonderful. Um, but first we'll talk about Greg is here. I guess you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, my name is Brett Nicoletti. I'm a filmmaker. I've been editing for 25 years. Just started making documentaries about five years ago. Stumbled into Greg uh, at a community event, Repair Cafe, which you see a little footage of uh, Repair Cafe event in the film, and uh, met Greg and was smitten with him. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a couple years ago, we decided to start working together, and I spent a lot of time at his house hanging out and asking him questions, and that's basically what you see here. <laughs> uh, Brett had a film here Four years ago? Yeah. Four years ago, yeah. uh, called The Running Man of Pasadena. <coughs> yes. Uh, did, did you show Greg that to show him that you know what to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sent it to you, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. uh, Brett cool. has this amazing <laughs> talent as a documentarian to find somebody incredibly inspiring who both makes me feel wonderful and bad about myself at the same time. <laughs> because, Greg, you're amazing. And, and just watching really every aspect of that documentary. It's just so inspiring that the way you live your life. Uh, I'm asked, how do you like the film, Greg? And, and I, I love the film, but I, I, I can't say it because I'd be vain if I did. <laughs> Fair enough. It's such well, a beautiful film that he's done. It is, and, and I say this uh, Every Q&A for a documentary, uh, everyone always wants to talk about how wonderful the subject is, because the subject is wonderful. But as someone who watches like over a thousand films a year for two film festivals, there's a lot of documentaries made about something inspiring that are not watchable. So really, your, your skills as a filmmaker are really on display here, how the pacing is wonderful, the, the value of the information, you, you cut right to it. Um, it's just a really well-made documentary. Oh, thank you. Well, the, the pacing part is something that I've learned. Y years of editing has made me, you know, realize that, you know, you only need what you need, you know, and, and uh, try and get as much fat out of it as you can. So, For sure. Yeah. And you definitely needed the Jack and Jill joke. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I just think about it and laugh out loud. She still doesn't get it. <laughs> we were talking in the, car, in the car on the way over here about how we're going to have to explain it to her, and we were trying to figure out how we were going to... How do you to, do it? <laughs> what, you know, what the proper, uh, you know, approach will be. But some, some you know, we'll, we'll get it. <laughs> but the art and the gardening and the helping people set up homes and, and then that, that, that clinic where you met him, uh, mm -hmm. repair, where people just bring things they need repaired. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, as a... You know, somebody who's you know, working, trying to make a living, and and uh, living in Pasadena, and have a family. Um, finding people in my community has been something that I've been, you know, actively trying to do because, you know, making films is is so exciting and rewarding, and so uh, his impact on the community is is, you know, palpable. Um, everybody who meets him, and you know, you go to his house, and there's handful of people there hanging out and you know they all want to chat with Greg and uh, Repair Cafe same thing you know Greg has this Greg does the knife sharpening at the Repair Cafe right among other things I would imagine. <laughs> um, I laugh because I I got volunteered Greg you're a sculptor you, you can sharpen stuff can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Okay you're the knife sharpener. <laughs> <laughs> and so his payment you know it's free but his payment to people who come with their knives to sharpen is that they have to tell tell you a story right yeah. that's 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 their required yeah. payment so um and then he gets to meet somebody new and they get to meet him and you know it it spreads out from there so well that sounds like a great place for you to find a, a, your next subject yeah, yeah that's right. exactly right yeah that's amazing well nice. yeah. here i guess we should hand it anyone want to raise a hand and ask a question yeah greg what were you doing in afghanistan was that like a like a commune Back in the day? Well, I got there kind of on purpose because I was living in Asia at the time, and I thought, you know, I'd really like to go over land and see what it's looked like. So I thought I'd get a motorcycle and go from Singapore, the, the one corner of the continent, to the other part up near Luxembourg where I could get a flight back to New York that way. And so that's a long distance by land. 
and so I got the motorcycle and then I got as far as Burma and by that time it was the early 60s where there this general Ni Win had taken over mm -hmm. and his solution for pacifying the independent minded states along the Thai Burmese border was kill them and they said you, you, you don't, you don't want to drive your motorcycle up through there because they're going to not ask you who you are before they kill you. All right, so I didn't go there and I got stuck in Bangkok for three years with my motorcycle and I loved it. I just loved it. But uh, it's a long story. <laughs> and uh, the, and, and what, because Kandahar, Afghanistan, to see pictures of you there in the early 60s? Was that Six, 65, I left 65. It, I left Bangkok in 65 and then I sold the motorcycle and said, well, I'll hitchhike. I'll go overland anyway. And went in, flew in and out of Burma uh, and then got to Chittagong, a port town in what was then East Pakistan, and, and, and continued on across India and uh, taking a little trip up to Nepal, but it was all over land, and then into Afghanistan. Afghanistan at the time was receiving free food, 100 pound kilo sacks of wheat and rice, and it was being shipped to a port town in West Pakistan, and these big five ton trucks were shipping it from the port town up into Kabul. Sticking my thumb out, one of the trucks stopped, and I jumped in, and off we went all, all night long into the highlands of Afghanistan and and Kabul. I got to Kabul, and the the university student women were wearing short shirts, skirts, and very liberal, and it was just it was like kind of being in the West, sort of. <sighs> Look what happened. Anyway, uh, what you see in one of the pictures there is the Hindu Kush in the back, and that's where Alexander the Great wanted to cross because it was told in those days, during Alex's time, that beyond that, beyond the Hindu Kush, was the rest of the world, and that's what he wanted. <laughs> and it's, it's a beautiful. That was June. That picture was taken in June with its snow ridges there in the back. Beautiful, beautiful place. Afghanistan, at least that part, anyway. Where, where can we get the book? Oh, uh, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hardback, paperback, and Kindle. Okay. Is there? Yeah. Uh, I was just kind of wondering, how did you uh, schedule shoot days, and what was your setup like? Uh, <laughs> scheduling was basically like, hey, are you around? <laughs> 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 and uh, usually it was, of course, um, and my, you know, my kit is, you know, uh, Sony DSLR camera and, uh, you know, a, a lav, I, w I would put a microphone on him and let him, you know, we would just talk and, um, I had, sometimes I'd bring like, try and bring like a fancy gimbal, like the, the, um, gardening scene. I had, I had a little gimbal with me to try and keep the camera steady, but most of the time it was just on a tripod or handheld. Um, we did a bunch of, uh audio post post production audio work because sometimes the sound didn't come through perfectly or I wanted him to say something a little bit differently so I would put him in the same location we would sit in the same location where we had sat to film and he would just you know speak into a microphone uh, but yeah but the scheduling part was easy he was always always game it was you know really great yeah the other was like when's the book going to be published right <laughs> so I wanted that shot of him opening the box so that was, that was built into the schedule. Um, that was sort of like we were gearing towards that moment. And once, once we got there, I sort of figured I would have my footage. And the shot of your son opening the book is yeah. Uh, yeah, that, so powerful. Is it, well, you know, we've got to have a finish to this because it started this, this whole thing. And we've got to have a finish. So his wife, uh, I said, just have anybody with a camera and have them shoot you're opening the package. And that's what it was. And look how it came out so beautifully. And she held the camera steady. Yeah, yeah she didn't lose her you jingle it at all. And he was like, he hit his mark perfectly. It's great. Uh, any more hands? Anybody? Yeah. I guess I have one more question. Uh, for great. Like, 
uh, just uh, that gardening technique to really, really work with the the land that you're in rather than trying to force it to be something else is really kind of cool. Where did you learn that? That's Hugo culture. Hmm. Uh, gardeners know about that. It's an old tradition that the Germans have now called it Hugel, H-U-G-E-L, Kultur with a K, Hugel Kultur. And what they've done is they've taken what you find in the woods when you go hiking, you, a dead log falls down, and what it does, it gathers moisture and becomes a nursery for whatever seeds and things coming by. And now imagine taking these stumps, large pieces of wood, digging a hole and putting them into the, into the ground. They will absorb the water, uh, whatever water there is, some rain, and then it will store as a reservoir. And once they're buried and it's covered over with sticks and green things and soils until it gets to the top, where on the top you put in some fertile soil, plant the seeds. And in time, they say it takes about a year for the system to uh, learn how to bring the water up to where the plants are. And it's stored down below the roots, uh, some two feet down into the ground. And once once the system is um, adapted, then you, you don't have to water the garden anymore. It's, it's done through the water that's stored in the reservoir. That's a hugo culture. Not something California could use, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Non-water agriculture <laughs> without well, irrigation. In fact, that's why I'm doing it, because I know that there's going to be a water problem. And if, if I've got the water in the ground now and it doesn't rain, the plants are going to be happy anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm digging another one now as we speak. I'm thinking, gee, maybe that's a second movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Depending on what I plant there, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Well, I want to say uh, another great film. Uh, it's, it's great to see and, yeah, and wonderful too. to meet Greg. Pleasure, Jim. And uh, thank you, everyone, for appreciating it. Yeah. And uh, keep making more. Uh, I guess a last question to throw in is, I mean, you're working full-time as an editor, so like, how long does a project like this, how much of your... Like, is it a six-month deal, or is it...? Um, it was about <coughs> a year and a half from the first day we shot. Um, we shot, I think we probably shot like 15 partial days, maybe 20. Um, and obviously I wasn't going full-time for a year and a half, so it's just, if I have a week, I'll, we'll film some, I'll do some editing, and yeah, um, yeah so it'd be nice to just focus on a film and not have to make a living. Yeah, Maybe yeah. but still, it's, it reminds me of Greg, the fact that you're, I mean, a year and a half to make a, a film like that shows a lot of patience and a lot of skill, and mm. can't be easy. Thank you. Yeah. And the other films, I just want to say, were, were great. I thought the second one was like a beautiful pairing with, with this one. Yeah. They are both uh, amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, we can talk about Lydia and Emily yeah. next. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah, three wonderful documentaries. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>